Hey there, I'm Trevor Houston, the creator of the Who You Know Summit, and I'd like to welcome you to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. On our program, we'd like to show you the job search like you've never seen. Everything from getting noticed by employers, how to properly format your resume, and how to network effectively using LinkedIn to drive recruiters to your profile. We even take suggestions from our amazing community. So if you want to learn all things job search, go ahead and subscribe now. Focus. It's all about the job search. So if you want to learn how to land that next success, you heard them. All you got to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show where what you know is important, but... It's who you know. Who you know. Who you know makes all the difference in your this job. This is the mark thing here. Yeah. It definitely does, guys. Let me tell you who I know. I got this guy. I met him at Video Marketing World. This super cool dude. I got to hear his story. Uh, I know Rich Cardona. And Rich Cardona is a LinkedIn video strategist for executives. He's a podcast host, founder of Rich Cardona Media, nope. and an ex-Marine group level legal advisor. If everybody can give a warm who you know welcome for. Rich Cardona, yeah, let's go. What's up? How's it going, everybody? Man, what's good, Rich? How are you doing? I'm well. You just reminded me I need to update my stuff, man. A legal advisor, that was a collateral duty. I was a attack helicopter pilot, so let's get it. Let's not get it twisted off the bat. Oh, hey, let's get okay. it. <laughs> helicopter pilot, all right. Well, well, actually, I was going to – we, we're going to get it straight right now because I wanted to dive into your story. I wanted to talk to you about your experience because you spent 17, 17. years, right? 17 years. Um Talk to us about that. That's uh, first of all, thank you for your service. We yeah, appreciate yeah, that, man. Yeah, Seventeen man. years, good lord. Yep. Seventeen. I'm only eighteen, man. God, seventeen. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. When when I the day I retired, uh, I had to spend exactly half my life in the Marine Corps, which was real interesting. Uh, but it was never intended to be that way. Uh-huh. Uh, I was, you know, in high school, and I knew I was kind of on a path to nowhere, and realized very quickly that, um, you know, I, I like to call it my first self aware moment i just realized if i went to college i would put my parents in a really bad situation number one i wasn't mature enough for college so i said i'm gonna go in do four years get out have money and here we go well that was 1998 so three years later something uh, pretty significant happened so i stayed in yep. next thing i know uh you know a decade goes by and i'm uh, retiring a little bit early uh, because they were offering early retirement and i'm like i think i'm ready to get out so i, I got out but it-, it changed my life forever and i owe a lot of my work ethic um what I perceive to be some leadership skills and uh, all that stuff to to my service and the people I served with. Wow. Wow. So I, I've got a buddy that um, got in in high school as well. So you said you got in. Was it in high school, like right out of high school? I, I, yeah, exactly. Like, were, were they were they recruiting you from high school? No. One of my friend's father was a recruiter and I just saw him in his uniform and I was like, I want to be that. Yeah, you yeah. saw that. You, can, yeah. you can't go into a Marine Corps recruiter's office and say, you know, interested. Like, it's over. <laughs> it's over right there. I was, like, signing papers, like, two seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> they're like what were some of the what were some of the things that they said to you they like show you some guns and stuff like hey do you want to uh, blow uh, stuff I'll up you exactly i'll never forget it they said <laughs> if there's a host I'm, I'm a 17 I'm, I'm 16 uh 16 year old kid wow you know, doing delayed entry and they're telling me well just imagine a hostage situation like i can't think about a ho- I'm, I'm in high school <laughs> so like imagine a hostage situation like the air force is gonna try and drop a bomb you know the navy is gonna try and go through the back door the army He's going through the front door. He's like, but the Marines, he's like, we're coming through the roof. And he like painted this picture. I'm like, what? I'm like, all right. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like I'm going to be on some sort of SWAT team. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, I like that. I would give you a mic drop for that. Your hair like they did on Full Metal Jacket. Did they do you like that beat? No, no. It, 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 there's, things happen, but it wasn't that crazy. Did, did you ever do that? Did you ever come down on one of those ropes? You know, like you did that? Like SWAT? Do that. He's like, oh, yeah, I did that. Man, come on. No, we've done we've done a lot of a lot of fun things. I, I'll say, and then flying obviously was the tip level was the best part of it all. So being able to fly was great. Were you yeah, Paris awesome. Island? Paris Island, South Carolina. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, South Carolina. So, um, Rich, tell us, you got out. You retired, right from the Marines. So, so you're you're no longer a devil dog, and okay. you go into the corporate environment right you go into the workforce oh, so boy. what was that like well i guess first yeah. transitioning right from the military yeah. that's a whole different I, world it's that's a really 
it's almost a loaded question, Mark, because for me, um, I had been exposed to such an enormously high level of leadership um, that I kind of carried those expectations on. And that sounds ah. unfair, right, from me to be having those expectations, but it's what I desired so badly. So when I got to the corporate environment, um, actually in texas as a matter of fact um you know it was it was blue collar work which i'm of, of course i was cool with but as far as leadership i always found myself in the situation where i'm like who who above me so to speak do i want to be like do i want to emulate like who's that guy and it, I, that never really happened um and i felt like a black sheep so it was a real interesting mm. dichotomy because i felt like i had so much to bring to the table but i also didn't want to play by those rules um and i didn't have anyone who i saw i was like that's exactly where I want to be. So it was a really interesting experience and it was very humbling at the same time because I kind of had to, I don't want to say fall in line, but play the game, so to speak, you know, and I had people who I was in charge of and it obviously is critical that they come first and foremost uh, and that they know what they're doing and why they're doing it. Wow. So I also know that like, like Mark was saying too, the transition from get, even just getting into corporate America, did you have a cha any challenges? Because yeah. I know I know a lot of folks. Um, uh, there's programs for that even because of the yes. there's like the translation of skills even like the 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 way that um, they talk about it the verbiage mm -hmm. yeah. it's like yeah. a different it's like a different way of speaking military jargon and yeah military jargon versus yep. and like it, yeah. but but explaining that hey no 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 i am a project manager hey no 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 no, no like i did right I, i've done that like but explaining that to the corporate america can be challenging did you have that challenge yeah i mean here here's here's let me tell you this this is the most unbelievable moment for me i i was getting out and my wife uh, was in the army and she was getting out at the oh. same time and uh we both had about two months of what they call terminal leave where you get you're, you're kind of out uh but you're getting paid and it's like you're terminal leave you're on your way out so we had two months off so we went to europe and before we went to europe i'm like applying to all these jobs i'm in the middle of getting my mba and i'm like i will never get this opportunity again so i'm gonna go take this time i was applying 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 i was doing everything and i was like i'm getting an mba i have 17 years in the marine corps i flew a 24 million dollar aircraft like all these things and i was i was getting nothing i mean absolutely nothing and then what i did get was some not so amazing sales rep jobs that were offering <laughs> a ridiculous base salary i mean guys i'll never forget i was in austria negotiating for five thousand dollars more a year for a base salary which now i laugh at i'm like that's ridiculous <laughs> but I was so desperate. And I would say whether you're military or not, whenever you are making a transition, whether it's to another industry, whether it's to another role, whether it's to another city, whatever it is, like you 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 have to be okay with the fact that you're you're gonna start over. And like you have to start over, you have to demonstrate. Like no one from the Navy could just come to the Marine Corps and be like, I got this. Like that's not how it works. Mm. Oh, that's <laughs> golden right there. That is <laughs> yep. reach the mics. <laughs> You know, so so if I could go back, I would have, I, I mean, maybe there's some things that would have been done differently, but job jumping and changing and, and trying to codify an environment that works for you is, is critical. But at the same time, like, you have to understand that there's just going to be a runway for it. Like, you cannot, you can't rest on the laurels of what you have done. Uh -huh. It's just a different game. So, okay, now you you did get in though. You got into corporate America. Like you spent some time at Amazon, right? Like yep. what what like what, what how did that transition happen and then talk us through, you know, your journey and where you where you came from from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, so um so I got that job. I will tell you this. Um I went through the interviews very, very fast uh -huh. and uh, I, I was floored at how fast they moved and how, how quickly I got the offer. And that's not, uh, that's not kind of me patting myself on the back, but I had to think entrepreneurially and, and, mm. and that sounds crazy, but I'll never forget. They no, no, no. Like if, it doesn't <laughs> sound crazy on this show. Hold on. I want to, yeah, well, I want to dive into that. So you had to think entrepreneurially. Yeah. So like what, what was that mindset? What were some things you did differently? I really want to dive into that for a second. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. Uh, this, <laughs> so I used, I used a Marine Corps kind of, um, uh, uh, it's called uh, an operations order. I, I kind of use a skeleton for the answer. And trust me, I did not know this question was coming. So the question was simply this, like if you were to start a business, 
uh, you know, in your town or wherever, like what would, what would you do? How would you start? And I'm just like, Oh wow. Like this isn't about like their core values. This is not about managing people. These are not behavioral questions. This is literally like, what's your business acumen? And I'm like, well, damn, I've been in the Marine Corps for a while. So that's a little <laughs> bit challenging, but it was called, it's called OSMIAC, um, which is like orientation, situation, mission, execution, admin, oh, wow. and then uh, command and signal. So I'm going to break that down really quickly. Orientation. So I said, I would look for, you know, a very desirable part of the town where I knew there was going to be a lot of foot traffic, where I knew there was going to be a lot of this traffic. And I would look at, you know, let's say I was going to open a coffee shop. Like, am I around a, a, a place where it's easily accessible for people who want caffeine? Like I said, something like that. I said, the situation <laughs> is there's a lot of competition and I need to stand out. So I'm going to name it after a veteran, something, something, you know, uh, uh, it's going to be a veteran owned business and I'm going to give 10% off to military. I said something crazy like that. The mission is to keep people caffeinated, to give exceptional customer service, and to do this, this, and this. I'm like, all right. And then the guy's like, keep going. And I'm like, execution. I was like, first, uh, I'm going to need, first, I'm going to need uh, help. I'm going to need labor. And then I'm going to have to think about the cost. I'm going to think about the overhead. I'm going to think about this, 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 and this. And I kept going, then admin and logistics. And I just kind of went through it. And he goes, do you have anything else for me? And I was just like, no. And he's like, all right, we'll be in touch. And I was like, you know, it was one of those things where you're like, what's, what's up with the feedback? Like, is that good or bad? But of course it was yeah. good. Yeah, did you get caffeine? Or yeah, that was good. I'll, hey, I'll tell you. Good. That's a good. That's a. That's a. That's a good answer. He was probably saying to himself, "I need to hire this guy before he starts a coffee shop." <laughs> right. But, and as a recruiter, I've asked those kind of though, questions. Guys, I, like Foster, Mark, Trevor, I want to tell you one thing I took away from this though, and it stuck with me. But you know, when I ended up leaving later on, was I did not detect in any way, shape, or form that anyone that was interviewing me was charismatic about charismatic about the position they were holding. Mm. And that should uh. be an eye opener when you're interviewing in the process, right? Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And now, and as an entrepreneur now, it's so easy for me to think of how I would approach a traditional job. And let me explain what I mean. If Mark was interviewing me, I would immediately try and figure out what Mark's pressing issues are in his role. And if I could solve and even speculate on how I could potentially solve the problem he has by with my skills and my talent to make his job easier so I'm he get it for his mine. people, yeah. Yeah. game yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to hire me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, I mean, that speaks that's to, a right? Drop combo. Yeah, that's a, that's a mic drop combo. So, yeah, I mean, Rich, that's on the real. That man. speaks to not only the problem that you're solving with the job description itself okay so again if i'm if, if it's a project management role or an hr role right you have that job description that's you're solving a problem with just that but you're saying even your interviewer if you can dig a little deeper as to what problems they have in their day-to-day -day and you and you can speak to that how you could solve their problems yeah. mm -hmm. they're like Oh, get yep. this guy in here as soon as yep. possible. Yep. And as a yes. recruiter, I don't want to tell you guys how long I've been recruiting. I'm not going to tell you that, Rich. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's You're not the job a, father. It's been a yeah, long time. Yeah, I am the job <laughs> father. Right but it's not about it's not about the candidate. It's about the company. Yeah. We have to remember that. I I I cancel job seekers all over, actually all over the world outside the United States and you know I have to remind those guys from what I'm hearing I have to remind those guys hey what are you here for what are we here to talk about the company has a problem he don't want to hear about your problem your problem ain't got nothing to do with his problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah anybody want to hear your problems they want to hear, yeah. they want to hear yeah. can you solve our problem yeah. yeah that's yeah. that's so true that's so true okay so you were at amazon you spent some time there but i saw on your youtube page and i and i, I was checking you out i was looking at your youtube page which by the way y'all need to go check out uh, uh his youtube page but it said good morning i quit <laughs> <laughs> up on the banner good morning i quit talk to me about that is that is that referring to amazon it's it's referring careful let careful me put it to you this careful way. careful <laughs> <laughs> no let me put it to you this way for someone who quit their job i was in i was in austin texas when i worked there i quit my job at 38 years old i moved in with my in-laws and I had no business plan, but I had complete and utter faith that I was going to win. Win at what? To be determined. I started following my curiosities. I dug deep. I eventually launched a business. I got on LinkedIn, of course, did all these things and started just kind of 
dabbling a little bit until I'm like, I got it. This is what I want to do. And that involved video production and, and being a podcast host. And once I was able to monetize, I'm like, okay, then I obviously, as you guys know, and how it needs to be you network, right? Like I know it's who, you know, but I always say, you know, it's not who, know, uh, it's not who, you know, it's who knows you. Who knows you? Yes. Content, create, content creation became a big deal. Like how many people know you without you having to reach out to them? Like, do you show up on people's news feeds? Are you interviewing prominent people like you guys do, you know, and all these different things. So, uh, the transition, so good morning, I quit was kind of like a rallying call, like now three years into it of being like, if you are miserable. If you wake up every Sunday, you know, or, or wake up Monday morning and are just dreading it, if you are driving to work Thursday morning and, and are asking yourself, is this it? Then let me be the guy to explain to you that it is possible that you can foster and create what it is that you want. Now, I'm not trying to tell people to quit necessarily. Like there's great jobs out there and there's dr the traditional workforce is for many, many people. But if you feel like there is this untapped potential, uh -huh. I wanted to be the guy to help you realize like it's real like it can happen and and i'm a lot better for it i love that That's man funny right there i love it because you know i was talking about this earlier about your potential right and the enemy wants to keep you from your potential and and god wants to help you realize it right and so you know I know a lot of people, they have dreams, right? Well, like, when did we stop dreaming, right? When did you stop dreaming? For the audience, when did you stop dreaming? I'm pretty sure when you were dreaming as a kid, like, there, there were some big things that you wanted to go do, big. some big things you wanted to go tackle. Those dreams came from God. Those did not come from the enemy. I agree with that. Those dreams, that vision, what you had, right? That came from God. And so I love what you're saying. Now, again, on the flip side of that, not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur and a business owner and all of that. Like it, it's not cut out for everyone, but right. It is for a lot of you. And the yes. enemy wants to tell you it's not. That's that's the flip side. And you have to decide that for yourself. You have to figure out, okay, is this real or is it not? Like you're going to have to make that, that call, but yeah, let me, I want to make a point. Um, I wish I thought like this back then, but when I was at Amazon, for example, this is for anyone who's in a job right now or anyone who's interviewing for a job or looking for a job. If you are able to position yourself mindset wise to treat it as if you were paying those people mm. with your money, mm. you are going to be a very that different one. person. Like <laughs> you have to act like this is my company. Yes. Would I pay them for the, would I pay them for the work they did or would I give them feedback if this was my money? Not the company's money. If I if this were coming out of my pocket, how would you look at it? Would you look at a PL statement? Would you want to have relationships with the people upstream and downstream from you? There's so many things I wish I could have done yes. better. And I did things really well, but that's a different story. And people are going to, you will stand out. And it doesn't mean you need to be an entrepreneur per se, but if you think like that, that's going to just help you understand and elevate your business uh, acumen. I'm going to give you another one. I'm going to give you another one. Yeah. Like, all the way around. Like, like think about, okay, so I, same thing. When I was in the auto industry, I kicked myself because I didn't take it as if I owned the business, right? I didn't. If I did, I would like, I was already crushing it, but I would have crushed it 10 X that yeah. if I would have took ownership as if it was my own business and my yes. own, right? Like I know I would have done 10 times better. And, and when those opportunities opened up, it would have, they would have opened up for me. Now, thank goodness that the timing wasn't right and that those doors were not for me because yes. that actually was a blessing in disguise. But, um, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think that the job seekers, you'll get promotion, you'll get elevation. Yep. You will be, you know, it, imagine it's your own business. Wherever you go work, do the best job you can. Yep. yep. I, one point to that, people will be more inclined to give you unsolicited help, you know, to educate you on like, hey, come here for a second. Like, this is what happens in the meetings I go to. Like you, you're not going to have to seek out more information because they're going to see you want it. Mm. They're going to be like, man, like this person is all over it. Like, let me spend a little extra time with them, educating them on this. And you know what they're going to be doing in real life? They're going to be giving you things that you can do to take off their plate, which brings us all the way back to the interview, right? Well, what mm -hmm. can you do to help that person? Those people who directly supervise you, they're going to want to elevate you because any real good leader, in my opinion, should try and get the people who right. they're working with to take their job. And I should be able to take the next person. Job, so, right? like, in a good way. I, I've got a question uh, because, like, like you're talking about with your story yeah. in the auto industry, like Rich with your experience. There are a lot of people that 
they're negative, right? Their inclination is, you right, there's glass half empty, glass half full, right? Yeah. And so a lot, there's a lot of people that, and this might have been you, Trevor, right, in the auto industry, where you were at point in time, you were thinking, why isn't this happening? Because I know you were wanting to go into management. Yep. And you're yep. like, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? It was yep. really all about you and, the, and, and from a more probably not completely negative, but from a more negative approach versus what you're saying, Rich, which is how can I? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If yeah. I would have took ownership of it, yeah. mm -hmm. right? If I would have acted as if I was the owner of the dealership and, and really took in a clear ownership of that role in that position, mm -hmm. I know there's no doubt that those opportunities would have been mine. Yep. That's what I said. Yeah, they would have been mine. But I did took it a different route. Yeah. I was the best. I was the top performer. I was crushing it. And they passed me up and I got negative. Yeah. And I said, well, how could you? And I said, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. And, and that's why... I didn't get the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a twist on this to to throw your way. Thank so, God I didn't though. You know what? <laughs> I didn't want to go to move into management. I was doing mm -hmm. good. I was recruiting. I had this thing figured out. I th well, thought I did. I did, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to move into management. But you know what? Because I did exactly what you're talking about. I took I took ownership of where I was. They promoted me. Next thing I know, oh my God, how did I get to this law? level. Next thing you know, I'm on airplanes and they're like, everybody else across the country needs to talk to Foster. I'm like, oh my God. And then I had fun. Oh, it was so fun. Verizon, I love you to this day. I love you. Did me right. So the, the whole reason I bring this up, and, and I know we got to go commercial break, but the whole reason I bring this up is because I want to keep it real for the audience because we see that in some of our in some of our audience i mean some oh yeah oh yeah L let me yeah be clear to the audience yep. sometimes some of this is you you the the battle is up here y'all it's up there it's up here and sometimes we see it in you know when we come into communication we see a lot of negativity we do there's a lot of job seekers who are negative and and and, and a lot of it has to do with multiple uh, facets like you know you're getting rejection you're getting yeah. ghosted you're getting yeah. beat down I mean there's so many elements to that but again it's up here y'all it's hold a on, this is a mindset game hold on to what God gave you yeah all right guys we got to go to a real quick break but I promise there's so much more <laughs> more mic drops coming soon we'll be right back Trevor Houston here and I want to thank you for tuning in to the who you know job networking show we hope you've been inspired encouraged, educated, and entertained all at the same time. For information on our different events, workshops, partners, or partnership opportunities available, check out whoyouknow.show for more details. And be on the lookout for our new mobile app coming soon. You never know how this show can help someone you know. You know, And if we've made an impact or put a smile on your face today, don't forget to hit that share button on your way out. Until next week, it's all about who you know. Bye.